Summary of the Jilting of Granny Weatherall by Catherine and Porter At the beginning of the story, an 80-year-old woman named Granny Weatherall gets frustrated by the way her doctor, Dr. Harry, treats her. She says she is healthy and would be fine if he would just leave her alone. Granny has the same feelings about her daughter Cornelia, who she hears talking to the doctor outside her bedroom door. The narrator points out that Granny's view is hazy. She sees the doctor float around the room and feels her own bones float around her body. This is the first sign that the story isn't based on facts alone. There are also signs that Granny's health is worse than she thinks. She finds it hard to wave goodbye, and her eyes close on their own. She starts to think about everything she needs to do tomorrow. Granny likes to have a well-organized life, with everything in its place. She thinks about a box full of letters from her ex-boyfriend George and her husband John. Then she thinks about death, which makes her feel uncomfortable, but she decides that she has spent so much time getting ready for it that it can now take care of itself. Granny calls Cornelia to ask for a drink, and Cornelia tells her husband that Granny is acting like a child. Granny is angry about this and thinks back to when her kids were much younger and she was their only source of income. She then thinks about her late husband John, who was younger than her children when he died. Granny thinks about what she has done and remembers how she once fenced in a hundred acres with only one boy's help. She thinks about all the sick people and animals she has helped and is proud that she was able to save most of them. Granny thinks back to when the children were young, and she remembers lighting a lamp so they wouldn't be scared. The story suddenly changes, and she tells the kids to pick all the food and make sure nothing goes to waste. Her thought wanders to other food that was wasted, especially a white cake that she had set out for a man who never showed up. This is the breaking up of Granny Weatherall. She was left at the altar by a man named George more than 60 years ago. Even though she tries to forget about it, she can't. Cornelia shows up again as she washes her mother's face. She says that the doctor is coming back to see her, but Granny doesn't know how long it's been since he was there last. The doctor gives her an four, and Granny starts to see Hapsy, who is the only child she really wants to see. She sees Hapsy holding a baby, and then she sees herself as Hapsy and the baby as Hapsy. Cornelia jumps in and asks if she can do anything for Granny. Granny thinks that she would like to see George and tell him how well she has done in life without him. She realizes all of a sudden that there was something missing from her life. Then she feels a sharp pain and asks her ex-husband John to get the doctor because she thinks she is going to die. Instead, Father Connolly, a priest, shows up. This makes Granny nervous because Father Connolly was supposed to marry her on her failed wedding day. She thinks about the wedding cake, which was never eaten and was thrown away. She thinks about Hapsy again, but this time she sees her standing by her bed and getting ready to give birth. Granny looks at a picture of John, but she decides that the picture doesn't look like her husband at all. As soon as the priest starts talking, she sees that all of her kids are standing around her. She drops her rosary and clings to Jimmy's thumb because she feels like she needs to touch something living instead of beads. Death came much faster than she thought it would, and she tries to ask God for more time while also giving her children directions for after she dies. She feels herself turning into a small light and leaving her dark body behind. She begs God to show her something. But Granny is hurt again because God doesn't answer. She says that nothing could be worse than this, and then she blows out the light on her own life. About the author. Callie Russell Porter was the birth name of Catherine and Porter. Catherine was just two years old when her mother died, and following her mother's death, the family moved in with Catherine's grandmother, Catherine and Porter, who was her father's mother. She died when Catherine was 11, and a few years later, Catherine officially changed her name to Catherine and Porter. Her grandmother was obviously very important to Catherine when she was young, and The Jilting of Granny Weatherall is not the only story she wrote with a grandmother figure. Catherine's bad luck as a child seemed to follow her through her whole life. John Henry Kuntz, her husband, beat her when she was only 16. She joined his faith, Roman Catholicism, but they broke up in 1915, and soon after that she turned against religion. 
Porter got married three more times, but all of those marriages ended in divorce. After her first breakup, Porter got very sick. People thought she had cancer, but she actually had asthma. She got better for two years before getting sick again during the 1918 flu pandemic. She lived, but she was very close to death, and this is also shown in the jilting of Granny Weatherall. Porter was all too familiar with death. Not only had she lost family members to it, but she had also been frighteningly close to dying herself. She also lost several babies through miscarriages, which was very sad. Even though she had bad luck, Porter was a very successful writer. Flowering Judas and Other Stories, her first collection of short stories, came out in 1930 and was praised by both critics and readers. Her later book Ship of Fools was even more popular with readers and made even more money. Her stories have been made into radio shows and movies, and in 1966 she won the Pulitzer Prize and the U.S. National Book Award. She also got three nominations for the Nobel Prize in Literature. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.